Welcome in the second section of our course. In this section, we'll be looking at the standard Scala library. We'll be looking at the functions, options, case classes, objects, and tuples. All those things are available in the Scala standard library, so we don't need to add any third-party dependency, and still we have a rich set of classes to use. So first we'll be looking at the Scala standard lib, object, option, tuples, case class traits. Then we'll be looking at the structure of a function. We'll be looking at its signature, return type variance, and function as values. We'll be calling a functions using carrying and the named and default arguments. Then we'll do a partial functions. We'll be looking at the partially applied functions like me. Finally, we'll be implementing higher order functions to create a generic functional code. This is a first video in which we'll be looking at the standard Scala library. We'll be looking at the option, objects, tuples, case class, and traits. So we'll be leveraging Scala option type. We'll be using sum and none. And finally, we'll be using tuples. So let's go to the code. First API that we'll be checking is an option. Option is a special type available in Scala that encapsulates the fact of value or missing that value. So we can create an option of empty. It means that this value is not present. So this will be equivalent of a creating null, but it is null safe. So we need to handle option explicitly every time we are accessing that. There is no way to get actual value without knowing that explicitly that this is not null. Also, we can do a none, and this is exactly the same logic. It will create an option of empty. Then we can have some functional operations on the option. So for example, we can map on the result. So for every value that is within the option result, if it is present, we are doing to uppercase. Otherwise, if it's not present, we are getting it as a default. And finally, we have a string result that is taken from the option, but you can see that we need to explicitly call get. And finally, the string result will be equal to default because it was not present. So we get that default and not mapping. So let's get back to the option empty and then start the test. We can set test passed, but let's see what will happen if we will have a value for that specific option. So we can create an option with a value field using sum. Sum is a class that is an option of not empty, and we are filling it with that this is a value. And we have exactly the same logic, but this time the mapping logic will be executed. So it will do to uppercase and get will create and get that value. So we are getting the actual value from the underlying option instead of getting default. So finally, string result would be equal to this is a value. So we guess that test passed. There is another construct that is very useful in functional processing. In Java, you need to have a third party library to have a tuple. Here, the tuple is embedded within the language. So for example, here, we are creating a tuple of two elements. First element is of a type string and second one is of a type int. So we can see that this is a very simple syntax and we are just creating that. Also, we can create a tuple of three elements, four, five, and so on and so on. Here, tuple of three elements, string, int, and int. Then, if you want to retrieve values from the tuple, you need to use an underscore and number. So first element will be a value, second one, 10. Then for the tuple number B, there will be three elements, one to three. We can see that all are equal to the things that we create. So let's start the test. But you can imagine that syntax of underscore one, two could be really hard to maintain and misleading because sometimes you will have 10 elements. But instead of using it, it is better to use case class. Case class is a simple construct that gives us an ability to name those arguments. So here we are naming named two arguments, there will be address and salary, and name three arguments, address, salary, and rate. So we can see that we are creating everything almost exactly the same, but here we are using specific field accessor instead of the underscore syntax that is a little bit hard to maintain. So let's start the test we can see that everything worked as expected.